What's happening, Feast and Friends? A lot of you are probably like me right now and starting to go a bit stir crazy with all this cold outside. But hey, that is okay. It gives us ample opportunities to uh, do some tackle organization and make some bait modifications, which we will be speaking about today, specifically jig modifications. Jigs seem to be one of those lures that a lot of beginners tend to shy away from when they start fishing. Now, for whatever reason, you know, maybe they tried them out and thought, oh, I tried it a few times, it just didn't work, I'm going to move on. Or they tried it and got it stuck in a bunch of timber and rock and lost 10 of them and thought, it's not worth my money. Heck, maybe they've never even tried a jig, they just picked one up at the store and thought, it's a silicone skirty thing with a hook and no, there's no way this is catching a fish. Whatever it is, I know a lot of beginners that just do not want to fish a jig. But that's okay because I've got five bait modifications or changes that you can make to a jig to be more successful. Now, please understand that all these modifications and changes, you can do everything you want, but it's not going to replace putting time in on the water, you know, until you really learn how to fish it, where to fish it, when to fish it. But once you really decide to dedicate to a jig, these five little modifications will certainly make it a lot easier on you when you go out and try to learn this thing. So let's stop yapping, take a closer look at these and start modifying. The first thing that folks do when they fish a jig is reach for a trailer, right? And for good reason, I never throw a jig without a trailer. And that trailer is going to change depending on when or where I'm fishing that jig. But what I want to talk about today, my first tip is rigging this little soft plastic creature or crawdad, whatever it is, onto the jig. So when I go to put a soft plastic onto a jig, I always take my soft plastic first and lie it next to the jig like so. I'm going to kind of mark out with my fingers where it's going to go. So I know when I thread this on, it's going to have to come out about here, this last little rib. That way I know it's going to be on there straight. But what happens is you take your jig and you're fumbling around with it and you go to thread it on and you kind of forget where it's at. Well, for new anglers, I'm going to tell you to err on the side of caution and always thread this on just a little bit more than you should. It's going to look something like this. And you're thinking, well, Debo, what the heck? This looks silly, right? Well, instead of taking this off and putting it on, taking it off, you know, if you put it on too short or it's, you know, hanging down here where you didn't thread it on enough and you have to pull it off, these keepers on the jigs are meant to keep the plastics on there. So as you put it on and pull it back, it's going to tear up that plastic and rip it all apart. If you put it on once the first time and err on the side of caution and thread it up on here a little bit more, this is an easy fix because you're thinking, you want this to sit on here straight, right? I mean, you could fish it like this, but yeah, you want it to be straight. When you swim this, or when it falls down, you want this trailer to be nice and straight. That way it doesn't mess with the jig. So to fix this is easy. You're just going to hold the head of the, the plastic here where it threaded onto your jig at the keeper there and hold that so that it doesn't move. You're going to take your first finger and middle finger and put those on either side of the hook. I'm going to take my thumb on the bottom and I'm going to just press just ever so slightly on that soft plastic and it's actually going to tear the back of it just a little bit. Tear back here doesn't really matter. I don't care about that. It allows my uh, trailer to move nice and free. I get this put on here nice and straight and I didn't tear up the head of this soft plastic. You're not putting it on and taking it off and ruining the plastic where it's going to keep falling off or you're going to have to you know, throw it off and get another one. It's going to save you a lot of headache in the long run. So that first tip is thread that on there just a little bit more than you think. Pull it down, rip that bait a little bit, and you'll be sitting nice and straight. So the second modification, trimming the skirts on your jig. This is the second thing that I always do with all my jigs. There's a couple things that I check. The first skirt modification that you're going to make is making sure that this skirt is not longer than whatever sort of trailer you have on here. If this trailer is longer than this craw, it's, this is a, a rage craw that I have on here. If it's longer than this rage craw and it's sticking over these flappers, they're not going to kick nice and free. I want something like this. You can see here on this jig, these claws are nice and free. They're away from the skirt. It's not going to be hindered at all. So the first thing I always do, it's really going to depend on what kind of trailer you put on, is make sure that my jig skirt is cut short enough so my trailer can go nice and free. That's going to be the primary action of a, you know, a jig if you're swimming it or letting it flip in there is the action of whatever that trailer is doing. So you want to make sure it's free. The second skirt modification that I make is trimming the front half of it. You can see here when you put a jig on, the, the jig skirt I mean, there's a little keeper here. Now some of these can be hand tied on a lot of them that you get, you know, just the mass produced stuff. It's going to be a little rubber keeper like this, which is fine. But there's going to be two parts to the skirt, this front part and this back part. Especially if I'm going to be swimming a jig, I do this. If I'm not swimming it, if I'm just pitching it, you know, especially if it's dirtier water, I don't really care about it. I'll leave it. But if I plan on pitching and swimming a jig, I'm always going to take this front part of the skirt like so, get it all bunched up and trim it a little shorter. And you're thinking, Debo, what the heck? Like, what's the deal with that? So as you're swimming that jig, the skirt's going to be nice and tight to the body of it. You know, as it's going through the water, the tails or claws or whatever they are back here flapping. But as you pop that rod tip or stop it or, you know, give it a little speed up and then slow down, these sides are going to flare out. So when you cut the front of that shorter, it's going to allow that to pop out. And I think it looks like gills or fins as you're really swimming it and pulsing it. 
I think it gives it a really cool secondary action. If you have a big long jig like this, let's pretend this was a swim jig and I just left it like that, it's just more of kind of a bunching. You don't really get that puffy, pointy look when you trim the front of it out. So again, if I'm gonna be pitching and swimming a jig, that's a modification that I always do. I trim the front half up just so it's a little bit shorter, as you can see there, kind of puffs out like a skirt. Now, is doing this gonna get you 50 more bites in a day than if you didn't do it? No, probably not, but the way I see it is if I get that little bit of extra secondary action that I can entice one or two more fish to do it, I'll take the extra 10 seconds that it takes to whip my knife out, cut those a little bit shorter and do that every single time. But that's just me as a beginner. If you wanna keep it simple, just make sure that your skirt is not longer than your soft plastic. It's gonna mess it up. The third modification that I make is trimming my weed guard. So you can see here, depending on the jig that you get, some of them will come perfect, perfect, perfect like this. This is a Nichols flipping jig. You can see there the weed guard is even with the barb of that hook, the barb right here. And as a rule of thumb, that's the way I always trim mine. Not all jigs are going to come that way. Some of them are always going to come nice and tidy like that. This is the Beast Coast, that double wide G spell. You can see it's perfectly right there with the barb of that hook. They're not all going to come that way. You can see this is one a local gentleman made here. I've had these for, gosh, I don't know. I got a bunch of them on sale. You can see here this is a long one. And the argument that folks make is if you leave a big, long weed guard like this, a bass comes up and bites it, there's a whole lot of stuff in the way here to get in front of his mouth and be between the hook and him. Especially if it's big and long like that, it's just going to bunch up. So you want to trim that weed guard down. Now, you have to be sure that you don't trim it too short. A lot of guys will have it up here and just kind of nip it off. But as it goes back, if I were to cut it that short, man, I come over any little stick or any object and I'm going to be getting hung up all day. That's going to aggravate you because you lose a lot of baits and then you're not going to want to fish it and that's all bad. So as a rule of thumb, always check your weed guard and if you need to trim it, pull it back here so it's kind of right by the barb, cut it there. Now the second part about trimming the weed guard is thinning this weed guard out. You can see this is actually a really soft, thin weed guard. There's not really a whole lot here, especially a lot of the swim jigs that you get are going to have barely anything here. This is not one that I've modified. This is a Strike King kind of finesse swim jig. There's barely any sort of weed guard on there. And the reason for thinning this out is a better hookup ratio. The less material or anything that you have here between the hook and the fish's mouth, the better. So thinning out the weed guard really boils down to a couple things. Number one, if I'm fishing around a bunch of sparse cover, you know, just some small rocks that I'm not really going to get hung up in, I'll cut a few of those out. If I can increase that hookup ratio and land a couple more fish that I would have missed, sure, I'll cut a couple of those out. Or if I am swimming a jig, you can see this swim jig came this way. I've not modified it. When you're swimming a jig, it's a whole lot different than a jig like this that I'm not swimming. If I'm not swimming a jig, when I pitch this into a piece of wood, you know, I want a good stout weed guard there so I'm not getting hung up on every single time, you know, especially in a bunch of those little gnarly bushes. I'm bringing this through. I don't want to be getting hung up every cast. And I'm not as worried about it because when I throw that in there, I'm waiting for that fish to eat it, right? If I'm bouncing a jig on the bottom and rocks or I flip it up into a, a bush, I'm letting that fish grab it. I feel it. Boom, I'm giving a big two-handed hook set and really laying into that fish, you know, a baseball swing type hook set, as opposed to a little swim jig like this. I don't have that luxury. I get one chance to pull into that fish hard. I can't wait, you know, make sure it's got it and give a real, you know, hard two-handed hook set. It's a moving bait and that fish kind of swipes at it. I want as little material here as possible. So as a beginner, that's something to think about. If you just keep missing bites, you're setting the hook and you can't quite get them, you might want to thin out that weed guard a little bit. Don't go crazy with it. You know, just take a few off. But the biggest part when you're trimming your weed guard is just making sure that it's even with that barb. The fourth modification is flaring out the weed guard. Now, this is the question that actually spurred this whole video. I posted this question on Instagram and I asked people, you know, if you always flare out your weed guard, move it off to the side. I was surprised by the number of people that said they had never heard of it or just don't ever do it. Well, I tell you what, flaring a weed guard out like this is going to save you from a whole lot of snags, especially if you're flipping and pitching in a timber or on kind of chunkier rock. Doesn't matter, this helps. And all I'm doing is taking the bristles of this weed guard and spreading them out. Some people just grab them, split them in the middle and pull them apart. Some people will kind of leave a little bit in the middle, you know, grab these outsides and pull it apart. You can kind of do it however you want. You can kind of get real crazy with it like that. But what it's going to do is when this jig, if I bring it up over a piece of brush and it lays on its side, it's going to keep that hook nice and protected. So what happens is when I'm bringing this jig over brush or a rock, whatever it is, and this rolls over on its side, this weed guard is keeping that hook out of the wood. Compare it to something like this where it's got a nice tight little weed guard that's never been modified, hasn't been touched. As soon as this jig rolls over a piece of wood and barely rolls over on its side, I'm getting stuck. 
I'm going to get stuck in wood all day, or even if it's a rock, it comes over a little piece of rock right there, it's barely getting stuck. So it's not at all hard to do. As I said, there's you know a number of different ways you can do it, but you're just taking that weed guard and spreading this out. It's protecting that hook better. And you've all heard me talk about already the Beast Coast Double Wide. This comes standard this way, so it's not double thick. As you can see there, it's the same thickness. It's just double wide. And I'll even take these and flare it out just a little bit if you want. You know, it's gonna give you a lot of protection. It comes over anything. It's not gonna get stuck in a piece of wood every time this rolls over something. So I was pretty surprised to hear that not a lot of people were doing that. But I tell you what, it has saved me a ton flipping and pitching into wood. So flare out that weed guard, you get snagged less. Now, the fifth modification is downsizing the overall profile of your jig. Anglers who are new to jig fishing get intimidated when you see a big, huge jig like this. You know, a big jig, big rubber skirt, this big thing hanging off the back. You know, that's a pretty big profile. A lot of new anglers are thrown off by that. So if you look in comparison to the other jig that I had earlier, this little guy, these are the exact same jig. No difference at all. Which one looks less intimidating? This little compact guy over here or this big, huge profile thing over here? Now, if I were a bet man, I would be willing to put money down that most new anglers are gonna reach for this smaller, little bit more compact profile. Why is that? Well, like I said, this big, huge profile is pretty intimidating. You know, big baits, a lot of new anglers tend not to start by throwing big baits. So where does small jig come into play? Well, it's gaining confidence in a jig, and that's extremely important when you're fishing any lure. Now, you may not draw all those big, huge bites, you know, the bigger bass, those kicker bass that you're looking for with a big jig like this, but throwing a small jig like this is gonna get you bit. You're gonna learn the mechanics of throwing a jig, how to fish it, what it feels like to get a fish on here, and most importantly, get that confidence. As soon as you start getting a confidence in a bait like this, you're gonna be a lot more likely to throw it and get better with it. So as I was saying, this is the exact same jig. You look at these two, and this is the exact same jig that I've modified two completely different ways. So on this first one, you can see I trimmed up the front skirt, this front part here. I trimmed the back skirt up, and I put a little tiny rage, what is it? Rage craw, baby rage craw on there. The little tiny guy, and it's a nice little compact profile, and that thing will get munched all day. As opposed to this one, I just kind of trimmed the top of it a little bit. I left the back nice and long, and I put on a big rage craw. You can see side to side, those look like two completely different baits. You know, the skirt links are different, the big trailer on it. They look like two completely different jigs. But I tell you, downsizing to something like this, or you can even buy them like this. This is those, uh, what is it, War Eagle jigs. This is a little tiny finesse jig. You put a little trailer on that and you'll get munched all day. So if you're a new angler to jig, try throwing a little bit smaller profile jig, a little bit more of a finesse jig to understand how to fish it. Get those bites and get some confidence. Now the sixth tip, this is not really a modification, this is just more of a helpful tip. When you go to tie your knot on a jig, especially one where you're gonna be throwing it out and really setting the hook hard, is use a knot that's doubled over, or, you know, something that has two separate strands going through the hook eye. Something like a Palomar knot, which is what this is, or a double clinch knot, the double shindo, G-Man calls it. As you can see here, there's two separate lines that go through the eye of the hook. As opposed to if you were to use something like the old improved clinch knot where you take the line when you put it through the eye of your bait, you just put it through once and tie your knot. Those knots are not gonna be as strong as something that's doubled over where the line goes through the eye twice. So I'm not telling you there's a right or wrong knot, but in my experience, and I know a lot of other anglers, knots like this where the line's coming through twice will save you a lot of heartache. You get a big bass and set that hook and snap, you'd be better off to use something like this. So that's it. Those are the five jig modifications that I think will really help you, especially if you're just starting out fishing a jig. Now again, the most important part above anything else is getting out on the water and putting time in with this, practicing. If you really wanna get good with the jig, go out, take one rod, a handful of jigs and some trailers and go practice. So let me know in the comments below, do you use any of these tips or modifications already? Or is there something a little bit different that you're doing that has made you a little bit more successful fishing a jig? Let me know. I love hearing from all you fishing friends out there, but of course it is late. I gotta get going to bed. So till next time.